Hello, video three of 2402 lecture. We'll go from the liver and include the gallbladder and the pancreas. So your these three organs are not part of the alimentary canal. They're not part of the tube itself. They are accessory organs. They're part of your digestive system because they produce a majority of the molecules that you use to chemically break down your food, but they're not like part of that continuous tube anyway. All right, so your liver, this huge big thing. Now this is a posterior view. We're looking at it from behind. So uh, this would be you looking at your own liver from sort of just behind yourself. So your, li the, your liver is this big kind of multi lobar thing. It's got four lobes. Disregard the names of those lobes for lecture. Uh, with kind of a pointy bit on the right side and the gallbladder kind of tucks in behind underneath that guy. So what goes on here? Well, uh, first of all, blood supply. You're getting blood to the liver from two vessels. The hepatic artery, which is this little red one tucked in here, and the hepatic portal vein, which is this bigger blue here uh, vein. The hepatic artery comes off of the celiac trunk, if you remember, uh, and that's a branch of the aorta. So this is just straight up oxygenated, nutrient-rich blood uh, that every other organ gets. The hepatic portal vein is a vessel system that picks up blood from the digestive system, the tube, and brings it to the liver because the liver is this big processing center. So you've got two inroads for blood vessels, one which carries all of the raw nutrients from the digestive system and the other one which carries just whatever oxygenated blood carries. And then you have one big vein that drains the liver called the hepatic vein, which will uh, ultimately uh, combine to form this in inferior vena cava. So the inferior vena cava kind of runs by and these hepatic veins all merge in. Exiting the liver uh, is also a tube called the common hepatic duct. So you see it right here. You don't have to identify it visually, but know that that's the, the, big, the big bile vessel that leaves the liver. Now that common hepatic duct unites with this little duct here called the cystic duct. The cystic duct comes from the gallbladder. So it looks like this gallbladder and the liver both deposit stuff and it goes down this tube. But what really happens is that the bile goes up the cystic duct and is stored in the gallbladder. The gallbladder then, when you eat, secretes bile as, you, as the food is processed. So you've got a nice storage bag here which can secrete the bile as needed. Uh, yeah, once you get to those guys, then you have what's called a bile duct. So common hepatic duct drains the liver, cystic duct drains the gallbladder. The two together form what's called the bile duct. And the bile duct then goes to the duodenum right there. All right, uh, next page. Uh, here's some microscopic stuff that goes on in the liver. Here is the portal vein, which goes and branches, and it supplies these little uh, hexagons called lobules. So a little lobule is a little kind of functional unit of that liver filled with little cells that you call hepatocytes. This is a hepatocyte. Sorry, this is the lobule. These are all lobules. I lied. Wrong scale. Each of these little guys is a hepatocyte. Each of these little things with a green dot in it is a hepatocyte. Uh, hepatocytes do all this stuff, right? Bile being kind of the main job we're looking at here, in addition to processing nutrients from the digestive system and storing stuff. Bile production is really critical. Bile is a big kind of mishmash of stuff, the most important of which for digestion are the bile salts and the phospholipids. These do not contain, contain enzymes, but what they do is they act as emulsifiers. An emulsifier simply takes a large blob of something and breaks it down into smaller blobs. Fats notoriously blob together. So if you can break them up into tiny, tiny, tiny little blobules, your digestive enzymes, your lipases that you produce by your pancreas, for instance, will be able to access much more surface area. Um, this is why when people have gallbladder surgery and they have their gallbladder removed, they're supposed to watch their diet, watch their lipid intake especially, and not eat uh, giant meals, especially with lots of fats, because it can cause some digestive problems down the, down the line. What can go wrong? Well, hepatitis, this is common. You know, we know, we know, the, we know the, the term hepatitis, we know the term cirrhosis. 
Hepatitis just means inflammation, and it can be caused by a lot of things, including alcohol, with cirrhosis kind of being the final stage of that inflammation, where especially if you uh, abuse alcohol for a very long period of time, your liver can uh, take a lot of damage, but other things can cause it as well. It's just that we're common with alcoholic cirrhosis, or we're familiar with that, sorry. Uh, lastly, gallbladder and pancreas. This is just one page. Uh, I already mentioned the gallbladder. Uh, gallstones are uh, little concretions, little hard things that'll form if your diet's out of whack or if your uh, liver's out of whack. Either way, you can form gallstones, which can get blocked in the tube, and this can require surgery or ultrasound or something to break them up. Uh, your pancreas is a big smeared kind of organ that spreads through the mesentery. We've seen it in the uh, endocrine system, so you shouldn't be aware of its existence. But now we're talking about the exocrine portion of it, which is the majority of it. They call these guys acinar cells or acini, if you want to use the, the Latin. And they produce something called pancreatic juice. Pancreatic juice is going to be your major uh, digestive juice. We think of our intestine being this major digestive organ, which it is. It does almost all the absorption, but you get the majority of your enzymes from your pancreas, which is why your pancreas is so important. Produces stuff called pancreatic juice and produces stuff to break down all of the molecules. So proteases break down proteins. Amylase breaks down starch. Lipases fat. Nucleases for nucleic acids. One little chain reaction that I want you to remember is one of the protease molecules that are produced by uh, the pancreas is called trypsinogen and anytime you see that gen root there it's going to generate something so trypsinogen converts to trypsin when it's when it encounters enteropeptidase enteropeptidase is produced by the duodenum by the small intestine which i'll show in a minute trypsin then causes a uh, two other molecules to become active, which are carboxypeptidase and chemotrypsin. So trypsin, carboxypeptidase, and chemotrypsin, sorry, chymotrypsin, are all proteases in their final form. So they're going to break down various parts of all of the proteins that you consume. And we get kind of generic here with the amylases. There's different types. You have, uh, this one's produced by your pancreas, but there's different subtypes and different, lots of different lipases, lots of different nucleases, but we'll keep it at... Uh, at this level of, of depth. And that's it for video three.